we all try out many different things in our lives why don't you gamble one life for krishna we see in these days so many children uh, forsaking their parents for the sake of uh, so called love or uh, uh, profession this is one place where you don't have to do any amount of interrogation friends ever since school and you together made this decision somewhere along the path that you will join a squad how did that happen you know you are from medicine you are an engineer how did you make this decision and how did you persuade your families to approve and let you do this what you are doing so basically it was not an overnight decision so like any other uh, major decisions of life uh, this also took about 5 years of time so when i was in my uh, first pu i first came in touch with iskon and for next 5 years i used to attend uh, weekend bhagavad gita classes so over a period of time the lifestyles also changed and in these bhagavad gita classes we get to understand the purpose of human form of life the prime beauty of uh, you know the human being so uh, these things uh, propelled us to think differently and pursue a different career than that of the rest of the world but then uh, like in any other household uh, the parents would also have dreams of their uh, wards uh, growing up to something working in an mnc traveling abroad taking them along so did you have those dreams as well did you want to be in an mnc earning a huge package and go abroad i got couple of placement offers in my final year of engineering so but then uh, the pursuit was already there and uh, so the decision was already made to uh, traverse this path so therefore that didn't uh, hinder my thoughts is there one single thing that really was the determining factor which made you choose this path basically it is the teachings of shila prabhupada the uh, teaching of bhagavad gita the message of krishna what was that message that really struck uh the message was uh, in fact i even now remember one point that prabhupad says that uh, you know we all try out many different things in our lives why don't you gamble one life for krishna so that means uh, that point i mean i heard this somewhere in 2002 now it's 23 so 21 years later i am remembering that point that was a real uh, turning point in my life i would say that uh, prabhupad mentions in that lecture that uh, everybody is pursuing the same life of eating sleeping mating and defending and that is common to the 84 lakh species of life so and then prabhupad goes on to say what is special about human being and he gives an example just like a ceo of a company is paid a handsome salary whereas the peon is paid only a meager uh, few thousands of rupees why is that he further goes on to explain that is because ceo has to discharge responsibilities of higher nature higher accord so therefore he is paid more so then he brings back the similarity to our lives and he says why is human being the given the greatest faculty of thinking so that is because he has to do something more than one what an animal can do so and then he says right now all the 84 lakhs of species are doing the same eating sleeping mating and defending so human beings also resort to the same four things then you are losing that uh, rationality man is described as a rational animal so now if the rationality is a missing element in our lives then we would just be equated to an animal life I was pursuing a medical course and even today many people when i tell that uh, i am a doctor by qualification they ask are you practicing <laughs> so uh, this question was always there because you know once you finish a uh, medical course because it's a noble profession so you are serving people in that way so why i chose a spiritual path uh i think my father around that time when i was deciding to join we had a discussion my father told that you continue whatever spiritual life you want to pursue at home i will set up a clinical practice for you at home patients will come you see to them and uh, other time you practice all your spiritual pursuits you continue so at that time i told him that uh, father there are a lot of people who are doing medical practices medical they are medical practitioners but very few spiritual practitioners are there True. and uh, someone who can do a spiritual practice and give this spiritual medicine is very rare 
and I think I have got this opportunity to do so. So I think I should use this because not many people take this path and this is my calling. Did your parents show any resistance? Uh, mother, of course, was a little bit emotional that, you know, for her, the main thing was that, you know, you're not going to have a family. She was thinking like that. Oh. So I told her that it is nothing like that. I am going into a, another part of a service. Yes. Like I would have done a service as a doctor, but I'm doing a service as a spiritual practitioner. And it took some time for them to understand. My father was uh, basically a person who respected free will. He would say, okay, if this is your calling. Okay, you do that. But stay true to your calling and... Uh, uh, don't fall back and come back here and again try to, you know, you'll be neither here nor there. So, thankfully, Lord has blessed that almost uh, more than 20 years now, totally. And uh, we have not fallen back as such. How does your child look at you? Uh, is it very different from other families? Like where, you know, father is a doctor, an engineer or a media person or somebody else. What is the impression of your child about you? Basically, she's just one and a half years old now. Oh, she's small. <laughs> she's she very small. But then uh, going by the experience of uh, the impressions of other children about their parents who are like me, the missionaries, I would say that uh, it is a very positive impact on them because, of course, to some extent, in the initial days, they will be seen as an odd man out because when they go to the school and all that. But so we make sure that our children are not uh, in dressed differently, or uh, shown as a different uh, person because they should not feel themselves as a, a unique uh, species. So we send them to the regular schools. They get exposed to the regular curriculum, education, all that. So and uh, over a period of time, as they start uh, understanding things, we impress upon them the importance of this kind of a life because as you rightly said, they would be seeing their parents with this kind of a tilak marking on the forehead they would be seeing with a shikha, a tuff of air uh, at the back and uh, this attire, so which is, uh, you know, not, totally not uh, uh, accepted in the modern, of course, in a temple it's okay, but then in the social community, you don't see people wearing dhoti anymore. So that takes a little time, but then uh, most of our children do understand and uh, because we also expose them to the systematic training teachings of Prabhupada. For kids, there is a Sankirtan school, there is a Sunday school. So on Sundays, we expose them to certain Kirtans and small, small stories connected to Prahala, Dhruva, the child devotees of Krishna. So, so in that way, they also start getting something which the rest of the children community are not getting. But tell me, how did your parents react when you told them that you have decided that you're joining this squad. So my father being a follower of uh, Vivekananda, so he used to admire him a lot. So and then at one point I told him uh, that, uh, see, everybody wants to learn and uh, read the teachings of Vivekananda, but uh, if they would like to pursue that path, then there would be resistance. <laughs> so then uh, he was quiet on that because he was deeply pondering on that and then uh, he understood uh, my intent of that. And then uh, my mother, when it comes, she was more of a person who was not worried about what I am going to do because my mother also reconciled herself by telling me a statement that uh, we see in these days so many children uh, forsaking their parents for the sake of uh, so-called love or uh, uh, profession that is uh, more important to them in the outside world. The so they are also leaving, yeah, leaving their parents ahead and going, okay. The difference is in their case, probably they are also able to help them financially. Uh, by earning a good uh, thing. and But then they are also going. So my mother used to tell, in that way, you are at least going for a great cause. You are going to a temple. But then one thing as a parent that she was finding, uh, I could make out that very clearly, she could not adjust is her friends, the relatives, the society asking her about your son's profession. Ah. So when my mother used to tell my son is a part of uh, a temple, they would really not understand a temple. So that means uh, morning till night he just worships the deity because they can never understand a temple can be a society, a temple can be an organization, a temple can be a disciplined and organized way of you know, propagating a spirituality, service. service. So they have no such thoughts. Uh, when she understood the concept of Akshay Patra, so she felt that uh, yes, you may not be physically be there with us. But then the very fact that uh, you are a part of an organization which serves 2 million children a day, 
so that itself gives me the greatest satisfaction and today it's 20 years down the line so she is completely a different person altogether i have not uh, had any philosophical discussions with her so the time has healed or if that that's what i would say and today she introduces me to her relatives and friends as a proud mother that my son is a part of an organization that serves 2 million children every single day so she has absolutely no regrets whatsoever so i would say that uh, phase of in initial inertia what was there to let me was very common to any uh, mother uh, as a, it's a motherly sentiment and that was completely fine but tell me about your wife how did you get married like okay. <laughs> how did the proposals come and okay. were women interested in marrying people who are working in a temple yeah yeah uh actually uh, as i as uh, acharya prabhu was uh, rightly pointing out uh, people think temple means mostly the people who join temple are sanyasis or it's just a place where there is a pujari offering worship but iskon is a very unique uh, temple it's mostly an organization where it's a community there are uh, opportunity for many people to come together and you know pursue it's a a, uh, it's a uh, yeah it's a commune so uh, once i decided to get married we have a matrimonial kind of a service within the iskon devotee community so there are uh, devotees who come from their families and you know they part practice so there are some people who uh, think that this kind of a life is good because they are practicing from their home so they would be actually willing that you know their daughters or their sisters also should uh, get into this and then the girl also would be interested because they are also spiritually inclined so my uh, case happened to be like that because my wife's brother is a full time brahmachari monk in the temple uh, in fact uh, there were three siblings uh, he was the uh, only son and there are, then there were two younger sisters so when he wanted to uh, join the temple as a full time monk he was working in a mmnc so he cleared off all his all their family loans and uh, my wife who was at that time just graduated from the college she was uh, he told her that now you take care of the family because i am going to take care of a bigger family and she was supportive of his decision in fact on the question uh, that why would uh, uh, girls or women choose uh, such husbands i would say see spirituality practice it is uh, equally available opportunity for both men and women irrespective of gender but because of such and social customs like we have a brahmachari ashram but we do not have a brahmacharini ashram so because that social custom doesn't accept that yeah. at so at least in india for that matter so we have celibates all living in the temple but then if there are girls who are also desire of pursuing a spiritual path seriously in our organization this is one such beautiful opportunity where they could get married to a monk who is want because see again uh, the brahmachari or grahastha it's a matter of uh, ashrama the spirituality practice is equally Continuous. available for a celibate and a householder both and this is all the more true in the case of our organization because even as a grahastha or as a householder i am not having any anxiety or any this thing to earn my livelihood as much as a brahmachari is taken care by the temple the grahastha is also taken care by the temple the moment we joined this organization i never want to say this organization is taking care of me because i am part of this organization this is mine this is mine this is my family so that is how we take it so now when women uh, as he said matrimonial is there so i was also a uh, beneficiary of that and uh, my wife uh, has also done uh, mtech uh, from nit suratkal and uh, so she is also an engineer she is right now working for akshay patra so uh, generally i also hear that uh, some girls or women who are uh, serious in spirituality and and also we also look for my partner having good habits right mm-hmm. so i would say this is one place where you don't have to do any amount of interrogation or uh, due diligence <laughs> due diligence because and for no sure test no compatibility test fix. for sure he will not be having the uh, habits of smoking or intoxication or anything for that matter Thank you so much for this beautiful conversation. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. For such fine news breaks and video features from ground on your mobile phones, don't forget to subscribe to our channel The New Indian by clicking on the bell icon. Also, follow us on the social media handles on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and Google.